Wow. What's going on, creative people? This is Creativity is an Idea podcast, a source of creativity for creative people. And I'm your host, Pyrick. I'm very happy and I want you to stay tuned because it's going to be a banger. It's all about creative people sharing their ideas, their challenges, their setbacks and changes that led to their growth. It's going to be amazing. And uh, stay tuned and see what happens creative person like you ladies and gentlemen creative people this is creativity is an idea podcast a source of creativity for creative people and today our entertaining guest our creative entertaining guest his name is thousand times what's up pirate yo 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 i'm doing good yourself man i'm just happy to be here man thanks for having me on your podcast you know i appreciate it so a thousand times is a music producer he has been in music for 14 years now it's been quite a long time was i born i don't think so mm-hmm. yeah. yeah that's amazing so a thousand times i know you you even had a guest here uh snap snap Snaplogy, Snapology. <laughs> uh, how do I pronounce it? Yeah. Uh, Shout out to Snap. Mm-hmm. And you've been around in Charlotte for a while now, and you have a lot of followers on Instagram. And as always, people do love doers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And people want to see people who are doing, so they follow them to get inspired and entertained. Yeah. And that's why you're here. So, Snap. My bad, I just said Snap. <laughs> thousand times. Yeah. Thousand times. So tell me, man, mm-hmm. who are you? Yeah, man. Uh, you know, first off, I'm just a, a guy who has a dream, you know. Um, mm-hmm. At the age of 14, I started messing with beats. Uh, I was using, uh, uh, what's it called, Magic Maker. It's a real simple music production software. And then it just grew from there, and I just kept doing it and doing it. And the people who started with me, because mm-hmm. it was like three of us who started making beats, uh, they stopped, and then I just kept going. And then little by little, I started finding an artist to work with. And mm-hmm. and uh, it's just something I love, you know. There's nothing I would rather do than either making a beat or being in the studio recording an artist over one of my beats. That's how you get your kicks. And that's how I get my kicks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know how that feels. It's more exciting, you know. Yeah. Can sit here and talk all day. Mm-hmm. No kidding. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. So, you know, growing up, you said you started doing beats at the age of 14, right? Yeah. So tell me a thousand times. Mm-hmm. First off, how did you get your name a thousand times? Ah, that came to me after, I think I was like five or six years in, you know, I was trying to come up with something catchy, you know, uh-huh. everybody has a name. Uh, so for me, I picked that name because I've done, you know, probably produced over a thousand beats at this point, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, they're just sit- Some are sitting on the hard drive, some are placed with artists. But uh, and also in, in addition to that, just uh, it, it seems like you, there's no overnight success. You mm-hmm. really have to put in the effort. And and for me, it seems like it was a thousand times of putting in the effort, yeah, doing things I didn't want to do. You uh-huh. know, yeah. Wow. So that's how you came up with the that's name thousand up. times. That is amazing. It has a really huge meaning behind it. Mm-hmm. So before I, I I did not derail, but before I went off to that yeah. question, uh, let me ask you. How was your childhood like, man? Yeah, oh, childhood was great, man. Shout out to my parents, Ernestine and Matthew, holding it down. What's up, parents? How y'all hey, doing? What's up, mom? <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, I got to say, childhood was awesome, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, middle class upbringing in Jersey, the suburbs. So uh, New York was like 40 minutes away. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then after 9-11 happened, I guess, you know, my parents, uh, they wanted something different, you mm-hmm. know, a little buffer zone. So we moved down to Charlotte, and that's when I started to go to college, uh, Queens University in the house. Mm-hmm. Um, studied political science there and graduated um, in tw- in 2011, probably showing my age, starting <laughs> to get up there now. But um, yeah, man, childhood was good and definitely molded me to have an upbringing with music because my parents were lovers of music. Uh, they're from the, a little island in, uh, called Trinidad and mm-hmm. there's a big uh, musical uh, influence there. And uh, yeah, they loved uh, the soul music. They loved the uh, like jazz. Um, and then they just... They definitely instilled the love for music in me. Mm -mm. They injected the love of music (laughs) in him. That is excellent, man. Mm -hmm. So, growing up in a place that is 14 minutes away from New York, um, coming to Charlotte after 9-11. So, tell me, John, Mm -hmm. a thousand times, tell me. 
what event, good or bad, wouldn't you forget? That's a good question. You just mean in, in general? Just in, in general, life? just just blow our brains out. Ah, uh, a bad event that I felt like that I turned into a good event was actually my divorce. Believe it or not. Ooh. Yeah, if you want to get juicy with it. Ooh, <laughs> um, you know, it. on the surface, a divorce is nothing but bad things. It's expensive. Aww. It's heartbreaking. Uh, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of disappointment from parents and from family. But it freed me up to be able to do the music in the way that I wanted to and with the intensity that I wanted to because now it was just me. I didn't have to focus on another person. And while that many people would look at that as being somewhat selfish, uh, I'm happier now than I ever been because I'm living in my my passion, living in my dream. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, with what you're saying, if that was it a good event or a bad event, or is it something you wouldn't forget? Oh man, I, I would categorize that as a bad event that I turned into a good event. Okay. Yeah. They gave you lemon, lemon, and you made <laughs> lemonade. <laughs> Yeah. You added too much sugar this time. <laughs> <laughs> You're liking it. Yeah. So let me ask you, uh, I just want to like drill a little bit deep into what you just said. Okay. You are saying now you feel happier, you have time for what you're doing. So no names dropping, but what was the case? Was it because the person, your partner wasn't really down with you with what you were doing and wanted you to, you know, get a job uh, go to school or mm. uh, do something with your life <laughs> what was it yeah no that's a that's a good part of it uh definitely <laughs> um a lot of people when they see you trying to do something abstract like being in the arts mm -hmm. or being a music producer um there's there's a temptation to want it to the success to come right away and, and where's the monetary success from all your effort you've been doing this for how many years a now? long time yeah. yep yep but uh, that and also maybe at the time I, I was so young, I was like 24, to be a, a husband to somebody, maybe that wasn't the right path for me, you know? Maybe I just wasn't ready at the time. And uh, looking back on it now, six years later, in retrospect, I can see where I might have messed up. But I've also grown and learned from the experience, as we all should, from yeah. our own experiences. How long did you guys get married for? We were married for uh, two years, two wonderful years down in Georgia. Yeah. Someone, Nothing else to say on that. Someone was in love. I was. Wow. Well, right. Oh, but good good point that you bring up, not to cut you off, but good to love and uh, live and learn and, and it's better to have loved and lost than to have never loved at all. Mm -hmm. And now I don't have that urge to necessarily rush into another relationship. I'm totally happy to just be focusing on the music. I feel you on that. Yeah. So, a thousand times, let me ask you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> let me ask you this. <clears throat> you decided to do music. Mm -hmm. Some odds were against you. So, at what age or how or when did you decide to do music? Yeah, uh, great. That's a great question. A lot of nuance there, Pyrek, because mm -hmm. you're right. Uh I did start making beats at 14, but that's a it's a huge jump to go from making beats in your house to wanting to produce artists. And, and that took maybe about another 10 years before I was confident enough in my beats to even approach an artist and be like, hey, do you want to get on this? And then probably another five years, which probably brings us up to now, where... There's just so many moves, sorry. There's just so many moving parts to putting together a record. It's not, there's, there's a lot that you need to do, you know, and, and there's a lot of effort that goes into it and a lot of uh, collaborating and putting the dots together. Mm -hmm. Not to, you know, make it sound like I'm doing brain surgery here, but <laughs> it, it is complicated. And, uh, so that, that, that was a time frame. Basically, it was 10 years of, of just learning the craft, learning music theory, learning how to do music well to something that people want to listen to and then another five years of, of just figuring out how to maneuver in this music industry where there's thousands upon thousands of artists and and god knows how many songs made every day every day yeah how many songs people are dreaming of every day oh come compared to the ones that have been made <laughs> yes yes wow 10 years yeah and I'm thinking I want to do it in six months. Okay. <laughs> You're probably good. That's crazy. Just kidding. Yeah. Um, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. start in music, right? I believe they go to a time you realize certain things were holding you back, mm. which probably it was your marriage. 
somehow was your marriage so let me ask you what were some of the things that were holding you back and what did you do to let them go yeah that's a great question man i will say uh, i was never a crazy you know partier out there in the streets or anything but uh definitely becoming more focused mm -hmm. you know every day there's something that we can all do to push forward our goals mm -hmm. and, and um you know just be more disciplined uh what else uh, that's really about it, man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and that is, let, let me bring this in. Let me create yeah. this analogy. There is this Newton's law. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have more to say about that when I put it this way to you. Mm. This Newton's law, it says, I'm paraphrasing. In order for you to go up, you have to let certain things down. Ah, yeah. So what did you have to let go mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. you saw progress? Yeah. Let me think about that. Oh, probably I would have to say I had to let go. Um being maybe uh, somewhat of a perfectionist mm -hmm. because uh, especially <laughs> in music, uh, especially working with artists who are very uh, sensitive about their material and mm -hmm. their artistic talent. And a lot of them have egos. And I actually almost think that to be a great artist, you got to have this overinflated uh, self-worth and feeling of uh, self because, you know, you, you, you got to feel like you're bigger than the world. You know, mm -hmm. you're, you're an artist, you know, uh, but that's just me. Um, but I, I personally don't think I have a huge ego. I feel like I'm pretty humble. But anyway, I'm off topic. Uh, but I guess uh, I I would say, Pyrick, I, I had to let go uh, wanting to control so much and more just put people in a room to do what they do best. Mm -hmm. Put an artist in the studio. Let them be creative. Don't necessarily dictate to them how to make the track that they want to make. And just let them go at it. So I'd, ha I'd say I had to let go of being more... Uh, I had to let go of being such a control freak. When you added the freak I knew, you know, you were a freak about being controlled. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's okay, I think. Um, mm. Come to think about it, just to bring something in. Um, I was listening to this artist track, and in my head, I'm like, oh, gosh, what do I tell him? How do I approach him? Mm -hmm. Because I feel he could do better, and the music and his tracks looks it feels dry okay like it's it's it there's nothing unique about it it's just a bunch of words mm. it feels dry and he has invested time in it okay. you know yeah. like and I, anyway anyway let them be creative <laughs> anyway so yeah. yeah good you had to let go being control freak mm -hmm. and being a perfectionist yeah it's a good thing. Uh, I don't think I can let go of perfectionist. <laughs> yeah that's excellent so yeah. let me ask you mm -hmm. And then we will talk, when I ask you this question, we'll talk about what you got going on, anything you got coming up. Okay. So, a thousand times. Listen. What do you do differently? What did you have to do differently? Mm -hmm. And what do you do day in, day out to see progress? That's a great question. Um, day in and day out, mm -hmm. my, my strategy, I would say, is to at least make one beat a day. You know, I wake up in the morning. That's probably the first thing I'm going to do. Even if it's a work day, I'll try to do that before I head out to my 9 to 5. Um, was there a part of that question? So day in, day out, mm -hmm. you make sure you do beats every day. Yeah. And what, you know, coming up in this music, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. producing then, mm -hmm. what did you have to do differently Okay. to see progress? Yeah. I would say, Pirate, probably the intensity. Um, I definitely noticed that when I stopped doing it as like a hobby, you know, as, oh, I make beats once in a while, and oh, you want to listen to my stuff, to just an intensity where that's what I'm thinking about from the moment I wake up to the moment I'm, I'm going to sleep, mm -hmm. even when I'm at work, 9 to 5, I'm still thinking music 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 what i can do what i can do uh oh man i have an interview coming up oh man i'm about to see pyrick oh man oh man mm -hmm. you know so that's it uh probably i would say almost 95 percent of my mind is focused on how to advance my music career while a lot of other people probably that's not the case mm, so you had to increase the intensity yeah. of your music yeah. Yes, yeah. Sir. because to to piggyback on it a wishy-washy then yeah. never gets done, you know. It's true. So it's good you had to increase the momentum. Let's go, let's go, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. That's excellent. You know what? Let me ask you this before mm -hmm. we talk about what you got going on. So, folks, I want you all to stay tuned. This is a thousand times. He is about to share with you what he has going on. And even if you 
are not able to have access to it now and you're listening to this audio this podcast let's say in 2019 mm. click on the link look him up and you'll find out where he is going and what he has been up to yeah. so before we do that let me ask you what three tips helpful tips would you like to give about music producing yeah that's a great uh question Pyrick. Mm -hmm. i would say probably for an up-and-coming music producer mm -hmm. you want to invest on, in good software and good hardware uh don't underestimate how far you can get with a simple setup but having quality things attached to it. Like I would say get a, a solid computer with some good studio monitors, uh, a little uh, oh, sorry, a little uh, console, mm -hmm. and maybe some good studio uh, headphones. And, and you should be good to go. And then, you know, you can uh, send out your material to be mixed and mastered the proper way. So I would say that's number one. Have mm -hmm. good software, good uh equipment <clears throat> number two invest in learning music theory to a, a degree that you know what you're doing uh, i see <laughs> i hear so much music day in and day out where it's not it's not musically sound it's not it, <laughs> it's not and that's not saying anything there's a every uh music is so such a creative thing and music is, is such a is like i can't tell you what you like and you can't tell me what i like but we can all we can all agree that there's certain check marks that need to be in a song for it to be a viable song otherwise it's just noise number two so and then number three uh you got to stick with it and that's with anything um you, you can literally do anything you want to do but you got to put the time in mm -hmm. and, and the time and energy and when our lives are so fragmented when you have a million things you can focus on or you can just focus on instagram or you could just focus on facebook it, it's hard to just focus on advancing this one thing Especially when you don't have a support system, which I do. Thank God. Wow, that is good. So that was a, a good, a good. Uh, what does it say? A good three tips. That was good. To anybody out there listening, and also now come to think about life in general. You you've been around the block, as you were saying, ah. a while now. Yeah. So what you know in general? Three tips, helpful tips. Would you like to give? Like, you know, marry a nice lady and divorce her after a while. <laughs> no, no, just kidding. Sheesh. Uh, so, so three life tips. Okay, yeah. so those are the three music tips. Three life tips, I would say, is uh, be an honest person. Uh, that should be number one on your t list, you know. Mm -hmm. um, number two, a life, a life thing that you can live by. Uh, be disciplined, you know. I think I said that already, but um, that's a something you can live by oh and read a lot so those are my three discipline um read a lot you know there's so much knowledge in books and whatever i said for the first empire okay <laughs> uh what was it be honest yes that was the first discipline mm -hmm. and op open books you know and flip through the pages <laughs> be educatable a lifelong learner yeah take a magazine and look through the pictures yeah. anyway just yes. that was good thousand times so mm -hmm. at this point thousand times mm -hmm. what do you have going on man i am just so blessed pyrick to be so busy these days i'll tell you i got a. Uh, I got uh, currently working with an artist uh, mm -hmm. who you met last time, yeah. Snap. Uh, we're in the middle of her run. She has a music video coming out in September. Um, and then we have about like three or four more artists that we're going to try to produce before the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Just And then uh, and then pretty much just, just in 2019, I'm going to shift my focus a little bit and focus a little more on uh, visual arts. I know so many great artists in the city. Mm -hmm that I would love to start producing uh, galleries or or doing like a art, you know, art galleries, having like events. Like I know I see you're an art lover. I'm sure you would enjoy the, the vibe that we're putting out. Mm -hmm. And uh, in October, I partnered up with Snap and Queen of Colors uh, and we're going to be sh uh, doing a fashion show. So mm. a lot of exciting things coming up and hopefully you'll be there for all of them. Lord, let me stay alive <laughs> for this moment. Yes. Yeah. That is excellent. So yeah, that is good. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. I like to talk more about the gallery thing, but I I think I'll push you to 2019. Yeah. And then you bring me you back be, a third yeah. time. You bring me back the yeah. third time, and you. I don't talk know about who's it. still I, watching this. Y'all saw me last week, but here we are again. <laughs> <laughs> that the last time he wasn't the main guest. Mm. He was 
the music producer for the main guest called Snap. Okay. Okay. So just to clarify yeah, that, we're just straightening it out. Yeah. <laughs> so that is good. So where do you? How do you get your source of creativity? Huh, man. Uh, I will say that at this point, Pyric, um, it, it's. Uh, I feel like uh, the more you do something, the more mm-hmm. easier it comes to you. The easier it comes to you. So, uh, I guess if you work at being creative, it will just ma- it will come to you more easily. I mm-hmm. won't say that, that I ever have any. That I don't ever have dry spells. I do, mm-hmm. but uh, <laughs> there are. But for the most part, I can sit down, make a beat pretty easily, uh-huh. and it it will be catchy. And then now I find an artist who I can place that beat with, let them run with it, mm-hmm. and the process starts all over again. So that's it. Wow. So the more you do it, the easier it comes to you. True. Yeah. Look at your podcast. You could do this with your eyes closed, right? No kidding. Yeah. Even when I'm sleeping. Yeah. Nah, just kidding. <laughs> hey, it took me a while. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the more you do it, the easier it comes to you. That sounds like a no-brainer, but it's hard to keep, right. be consistent yes. with things. Yes. Consistency. Yeah. Because I remember to piggyback on what you're saying, just for the audience. I remember when I started the podcast. Though I haven't, it hasn't been long. This is this is gonna be um, the 19th episode. Wow. Well, you also be the 19th episode. Yeah. So my bad. The 21st episode. 21st. Yeah. Okay. The 21st episode. Wow. When I started, I was still reading off. I was reading the questions. I'll okay. have it with me. And I'll be looking at it. And I'll be showing it in the camera. Like, yo, look at it. I'm still looking. Yeah. You know, I'll be drawing blanks here and there. Yeah. And yeah. one of the guests was like, you know, it'll it, you get good at it. Yeah. You know, with time. Of course. And he was right. And I knew it was going to happen as long as mm-hmm. you keep doing it. Of course. You know. And now look at you. You're so relaxed. You got wonderful lighting. You got bottled uh, water for the hey, gas. Hey, you, you didn't even guy. open that. Hey, take a sip. <laughs> <Yeah>. mm. <laughs> so, that is excellent. Thanks, <laughs> thanks. <for laughs> hey, uh, do we do some pro- promotional yep. ad here? <laughs> Shout out to Natural Spring Water. <laughs> I drink it. <laughs> yeah. So, a thousand times. Mm-hmm. That was that was a good way to have a source of creativity. And at this point, we are about to have some fun. We are about to have a personal, private, behind closed doors oh. conversation. We are about to gossip. Oh, okay. So, a thousand times, anything out there, any public figure, any public issue, mm-hmm. anything you want to address, you want to compliment, you want to vent at, you want to uh, whine about, you want to bitch about, <laughs> you want to, yeah. anything. Yeah. Let it flow. Whew, man. I will say, Pyrick, unlike most of your guests, I am pretty, you know, pretty uh, focused on what I got going on, mm-hmm. maybe to my detriment, you know, I, mm-hmm. I should probably look outward more. But I will say, uh, in the Charlotte scene, I'm very happy to see how many artists are just coming together and working together. Mm-hmm. Not just artists, podcasts too. It just seems like everybody at this point is very receptive to networking and working together. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that, that's an awesome thing. We are about to wrap up, but I want to ask you, mm-hmm. what do you wish you had known yeah. when you were starting? That's a great question. Huh. I'll tell you what I I'm glad that I didn't know. How about I start You didn't there? know. Hmm, I am so thankful that I didn't know, Pyrick, how long, <laughs> how expensive, <laughs> how many twists and turns this music career would take before I started to see a return. That would have totally discouraged me. Like, if I knew that it would be such a grueling process, as it should be, because otherwise everybody would be doing this and there'd be no value to be being a successful professional artist but still if i had known that i probably would not have done it i'll tell you what i would i wish i would have known is that you don't need a million songs pyrick and you don't need a million videos you should focus on on being so amazing at what you do that when you do drop a piece of art it's awesome and you're in all the major blogs just on the value of that art alone Mm -hmm. and that's just my two cents Focus on your craft. That's what I would say. I see you have um, 
what is this? What is this on your shirt? Hey, bread, this is bread this. to win. What is that? Bread to win. This is that new uh, Witty Misfit joint. You know, shout out to DJ. He mm-hmm. has the best clothing line in town. And then also shout out to Gold Supply Online, uh-huh. uh, my uh, sponsor, who's giving everybody ten percent off when you use my promo code TT twenty. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> definitely check it out, bro. Br- br- what does what does it say yeah, again? Bread to win. Bread to win. All yeah. right. That is excellent. Yeah. That is excellent. Wow. So. Tell them, how can they find you? You can find me by Googling a uh, thousand times music producer and something will definitely come up or on Instagram uh, at underscore thousand times uh, underscore and that'll bring up my profile. Yeah. yeah. So that was thousand times. So creative mm. people, if you're listening to this, yeah. I want you to, I want to encourage you to share this, which all your friends who are creative or anybody you know who wants to be entertained and inspired because I believe whatever thousand times said at least a line or two would make sense to you would resonate with you for you to you know keep doing what you're doing and as always I was your host Pyrick okay. and today's guest is or was thousand times a music producer thank you Pirate. thank you Pirate, for having me it's a pleasure man i really appreciate it man all right bye y'all and as always don't fuck up but when you do fuck up make sure you fuck up real good (laughs) so that you can help others meaning you learn from your mistake and also fuck up in a good way okay yeah so (laughs)